Senator Lindsey Graham now. He serves on the Armed Services Committee in the Senate, close ally of President Trump as well. And Senator Graham, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank I know you. you've spoken to the president several times about this summit. What's your counsel? Is he ready? Does he know what he wants to get out of this meeting? Yeah, I think he's very much ready. I think what he's going to convey to North Korea is he wants a peaceful resolution to the nuclear threat as well as to end the uh, Korean War. But the goal is to eliminate their nuclear missile program, not contain it, do it in a win-win fashion. There's three outcomes here. Peace, where we have a win-win solution. Uh, military force, where they, we devastate the North Korean regime and stop their program by force. Or to capitulate, like we've done in the past, and Donald Trump is not going to capitulate. So there's really only two options, peace or war. And, and, and as you know, several of your Democratic colleagues in the Senate have sent the president a letter yeah. designed, I guess, to stiffen his spine. Very tough letter saying that yeah. the outcome has to yeah. be complete denuclearization, no more testing, weapons dismantled. Here's what they write. Any deal that explicitly or implicitly gives North Korea sanctions relief for anything other than verifiable performance of its obligation to dismantle its nuclear and missile arsenal is a bad deal. Do you agree? A hundred percent. And I think they'll be getting a call from the president. I wish they had sent such a deal, a letter to President Obama regarding the Iranian nuclear efforts. But I embrace uh, this letter. It is a very tough thing to accomplish. But here's what I would say to my Democratic colleagues. I appreciate you telling the president what a good deal would look like, but the country needs you to back the president up to get that deal. So here's the question for my Democratic colleagues. If diplomacy fails, will you support my efforts to authorize use of military force as a last resort to convince North Korea and China things are going to be different this time? A bipartisan AUMF would really make that letter uh, much more credible. And if diplomacy fails as a last resort, De Democrats and Republicans need to put the military option on the table or we'll never get a good deal. So if you're ready to move forward on that, what would you need to see on Tuesday to prevent you from moving forward to that use of force authorization? Uh, we'll know diplomatic failure when we see it. I don't expect the deal next Tuesday. I expect the process to be started next Tuesday. Here's what I expect. North Korea will try to run out the clock. It's not if they have to give up their nuclear and missile program, it's how and when. The how is a win-win peace agreement where they get security in return for giving up their program when. I think the president wants this to come to an end in his first term. They understand electoral politics in North Korea of the United States. They always try to run out of president in terms of the time on his watch. That's not going to happen here. So we'll find out in about a year if this is going to work. And I have an AUMF already drafted. I hope I never have to use it. But if you want to convince North Korea and China that things are different but, with Trump, then the Congress needs to have his back. But uh, Senator Graham, as you know, the top uh, expert in the United States on the North Korean nuclear weapons program says it's going to take 15 years to fully dismantle that North Korean program. Yeah, I, 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 what I'm saying here is that you'll have a deal one way or the other in his first term that can be implemented in a way that we all believe. Uh, I don't know how long it took them to get to where they're at. Uh, I don't think 15 years is on the table, but I don't expect it to be done in one year. But what I do expect to be done in a year from now is an agreement that does dismantle their nuclear weapons programs, their missiles, removes all plutonium and uranium, anytime, anywhere inspections. And uh, we're not going to let them run out the clock again. They talk about giving up, but they wind up building up. It's as old as time itself as to what North Korea does. They promise a bunch of things, then they back out. Trump is going to call the question on North Korea while he's president of the United States. He's not going to pass this on to the next president of the United States. There's no reason they can't give up their nuclear weapons program within 15 years. He is also calling the question on trade coming off that G7 meeting yesterday yeah. in Canada. Real break with our allies right there. And I want to read you what, what your best friend in the Senate, John McCain, uh, said about what happened yesterday with President Trump. He said, to our allies, bipartisan majorities of Americans remain a pro-free trade, pro-globalization, and supportive of alliances based on 70 years of shared values. Americans stand with you even if our president does not. Your response? I'm not so sure John's right about where America is on trade. The Bernie Sanders element of the Democratic Party doesn't stand for free trade. 
Uh, Hillary Clinton said she would get out of the Trans-Pacific Partnership if she had become president. Uh, there's a movement in our party that, that Trump uh, uh, seized that got him the nomination and eventually uh, become president of the United States. So I'm not so sure a majority of Americans believe that globalization and free trade is in our interest. I believe that. John McCain believes it. But the reason we're having these problems here at home, Brexit, Italy, there's a movement all over the world uh, to look inward, not outward. And I think it's a mistake, but I'm not so sure most Americans agree with John, John McCain and Lindsey Graham. We also saw the president of the G7 suggest again that it should become the G8, that Russia should be invited back in. <laughs> yeah. That drew a sharp response from Senator Bob Menendez. He's coming up next on this program, top Democrat on the Foreign Relations Committee. He says it proves that Putin's interference in our election is the best investment he ever made. Well, I agree that expanding the G7 to the G8 now would be a mistake. You've got to deal with Russia. They're, they're out there. They're in Syria. But there's no way I would ever agree to give them that legitimacy. The Soviet Union may have fallen, but the evil it represents is alive and well in Putin's Russia. He is no friend of the United States. He's dismembering democracies everywhere and trying to do so in our own backyard. So there's no way I would legitimize him. I would stay tough on Putin. It would be a mistake to try to get him back into the G8. But to Bob and other Democrats, you've laid out what a good deal would look like. I agree with that deal. You need to help the president get there. You need to make it real to North Korea and China that if diplomacy fails, the military options on the table. And the best way to do that, to convince these people, is have a bipartisan effort to do so. You gave me my segue there, Senator Graham. Thanks very much for your time this morning. <laughs> Want to bring in